104.5 The Team. We are joined by Mark Johnson. He's part of the Denver Broncos flagship station, KOA. Uh, Mark, let's let's start with the the ugly question first, and then we can get to all the fun that is the Denver Broncos season. Uh, the investigation into Peyton Manning, do you feel that will have any effect on the Broncos moving into the Super Bowl? You know, I don't think it'll have any effect, but I do know it's going to be a story. You know, that, that, that bridge has been crossed here in the Mile High City when it first came out uh, after the report from Al Jazeera. You know, a few weeks back here, uh, Manning very angrily, as you all well know, responded, called it garbage. Uh, since then, Al Jazeera, of course, announced what's going off the air. Peyton kind of chuckled at that here a short time ago. And there's still no word on if he's going to do anything legally like some of the other players have. Uh, when it's all said and done, he did say at one point he pushed that to the end of the season. So, uh, obviously, it's going to be a, a topic of conversation in the Super Bowl. Everything's a topic of conversation in the Super Bowl, but I, I don't think it's going to have any great effect in terms of what happens between the lines come February 7th. What would it mean for the city of Denver to capture another Super Bowl championship? Well, you know, they have been so close here since Peyton Manning has come to town. You think of two years ago with all the excitement, that phenomenal offense they had, the record-setting season that he had, and then they get there and get embarrassed uh, by the uh, Seattle Seahawks uh, in that championship game in, in New York, uh, you know, this was a crushed city, a very proud city. And, of course, that you go back to 97 and 98 when John Elway led to the back-to-back uh, Super Bowl championships. And so to get another one like that and do so with Peyton, because there was so much promise when they brought him on board, it seemed like such a, such a home run getting him as a free agent, uh, you know, after he, he was let go by the Indianapolis Colts. This was the expectation, that he would bring home the Lombardi Trophy at some point, came close two years ago. So, Maybe, in, uh, to borrow his term, his last rodeo, uh, I think that'd be a phenomenal story, and this city would be overjoyed. Mark Johnson from KOA joins us right here on 104.5 The Team. We, uh, we spoke to Floyd Little yesterday, and Floyd Little said that this Super Bowl is about winning one for Peyton Manning. Do you feel that is the case with a lot of the team? Are they looking at this as, hey, let's get the sheriff a- another ring? You know, I, I think there's some of that going on. I think there's a DeMarcus Ware aspect of this, this whole deal. You're talking one of the great you know, rushing outside linebackers, defensive ends, and recent memory. Uh, so the first time he's had a chance to be with one, I know Von Miller has talked at length about getting one for DeMarcus. I, I think that's part of this equation. And, guys, I think, you know, with Pat Bolin's illness, the legendary owner for the Broncos, and all that he's going through with the onset of Alzheimer's, and you don't see him much anymore at all. In fact, you saw that after the AFC Championship game when Jim Nance presented the trophy. It was his wife who was out there. Now, there's a lot of those kind of angles, I think, the emotional angles in and around this game. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of great storylines leading up for Denver, and you know, there will be uh, a lot of talk of those folks uh, if and when they bring home the Super Bowl t- uh, title. What's your confidence level? Can they go out and get it done? Well, I'll say this, and, and I, think, I think the Carolina Panthers are an impressive, impressive football team on both sides of the ball. Cam obviously is unique. That defense, that, you know, I think that the defensive front's fantastic. Those two big tackles into the linebackers led by Luke Keekley are extremely fast. But I'll say this about Denver. As good as that defense is, and, and there are issues on the offensive side. Make no mistake about it. That defense is so good and so dominant and so opportunistic I give them a chance, certainly any game they play, regardless of who the opponent is, yes. Mark, when you when you look at this game, you know, Cam Newton's so different from Tom Brady. How will this defense, uh, you know, prepare to go against him? Well, the one thing I'll guarantee you, they won't approach it the same way because if guys like uh, DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller pin their ears back and go after Cam Newton, they'll go flying by, uh, you know, when they, when they whiff on him and end up 50 yards downfield. So I think you're going to see kind of a soft rush on him. They're going to contain him in the pocket the best they can uh, like that. A cover in the back end where you got guys like you know Chris Harris and, and Akeem Talib have been so good and when you put those guys out on an island. So if, if they can pressure him but do so from a disciplined standpoint, I think that's the way you have to approach him. Force him to try and beat you with the arm. Now, I know he's got a phenomenal arm, but he's still a, a developing young quarterback from the mental aspect of the game. And I think you know they, they might see the Broncos test him in that regard and not let him go out and use all those phenomenal athletic gifts that he's got and beat the Broncos that way. Mark Johnson from the uh, Denver Broncos flagship station, KOA, right here on 104.5 The Team. Uh, Mark, next year, who's the quarterback for the Broncos? Is it Brock Osweiler? I think it's going to be. You know, I, I was just on a show this morning. They asked that very question, and we were kind of debating it back and forth. I'm hard-pressed one way or the other, uh, regardless of what happens in the Super Bowl, seeing Peyton Manning back here next year. I think from John Elway's perspective, 
at some point you've got to make that transition. This was kind of a nice, uh, you know, intermediate year, if you will, with those seven games that Brock Osweiler started. I know he's due some money here, and I think he earned himself some. And by all indications, Elway believes that Osweiler's got the potential and showed it over the course of those nearly two months that he can be a starting quarterback in this league. And, and again, when, when you've got that kind of defense, you don't need Peyton Manning or Tom Brady to prime for goodness sakes to win a lot of football games <laughs> as long as you keep that unit together. So my, my guess is, my gut would be, yeah, that number 17 starting quarterback here next year. He ends up someplace, uh, you know, playing in Houston or something for a year. I don't know. You've got that classic awesome voice. You were the call for the two, 2003 Syracuse Orange, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. And I was at Syracuse for two years. And uh, Carmelo and Anthony and I, I like to joke all the time that it, it took he and I getting there for them to get a championship. <laughs> I was still Melo. He had a bit more to do that with that than I did. But, yeah, I was the uh, voice of the Orange for two years back in the early 2000s. Well, if that be the case, can we get you to move back over here and do the Knicks game so you two can bring <laughs> the Knicks a championship? <laughs> hey, man, I'd come hang out with uh, Coach Beheim anytime. Why not? <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark Johnson for KOA, taking some time with us today. And uh, good luck to your Broncos. All right, guys. Take care.